All right, there we go. It is Tuesday, big, big day. So much going on in the universe. But good evening, everyone. This is Carol Sue, a.k.a. Nani Boss, live with two sisters. Hey, good evening, everyone. It's Janice, a.k.a. Wellness Diva 5.0. Uh, to Sisters Triumph Tuesday at night. And uh, yeah, there's a lot I could say. I don't know even where to begin, but um, what I will say is that good over always, always prevails over evil. Yeah. And, you know, it, again, it's. You know, we get we often get all these kind of new news alerts, and of course, yesterday we were getting as the news alerts were popping in. Uh, I had a few people message me. They said, you know, asked me my opinion, what I thought of it, and was I surprised? No, I'm not surprised. Uh, as we've talked probably throughout the last couple of years, and we always interject with politics from time to time because politics whether you like it or not do impact our health and our wellness sometimes it's for the good sometimes it's not so much for the good but it just means that we are being abreast of the situations and you know how it is going to impact your own personal beliefs how it's going to impact your family your community uh and really the entire country as a whole so it, it would be a miss not to discuss it because it's something that is unprecedented. As we know, it has never happened to a sitting uh, president. It's never happened to a president that's just uh, left the office, basically. Uh, it's never happened in our history. And when, you know, and, 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 and I guess apparently today as well, um, the, the oligarch of the new regime in the Banana Republic in DC, apparently there's a congressman who also was, uh, his cell phone was confiscated by the oligarch. And that's how I'm gonna refer to them because that's what it's like. It's it, To me, it is beyond comprehension that our country and our world, and not surprising, but it is it, it, to think that an agency is now the oh gosh i'm trying to think of you know i'm saying the word oligarch which you know some will agree some will not but is the mouthpiece how about if i try it that way the mouthpiece of a party is egregious at best and once once i learned because you're here then you start hearing the backstory in the history and from what i understand just from you know information that was was talked about this particular office out of DC that was the one who transcended onto this uh, past president's number 45's property, you know, with over 30 agents and 20 vehicles or whatnot. Um, exactly a week prior, meaning before this happened, so, so yesterday was Monday, so a week ago Monday, Apparently, there must be some people that weren't happy that decided to take a whistle and blow into it, if you get my drift, uh, about the weaponization and politi pol political aspirations of a few in that particular office, and apparently was not too happy and decided to uh, vent. And I believe that the office was notified in some way, shape, or form. So how ironic that same office, because there's many field offices, right? Um, the Miami office, from what I understand, didn't even know that this was happening. The attorney general of the state of Florida and the governor did not know this is, was happening. Um, but this, this, this decision, uh, you know, came from higher ups and for the person occupying the people's house to declare that he didn't know anything about it. That's special. Well, I actually kind of believe him. He may have not known about it, but certainly his handlers knew about it. Uh, I wouldn't put anything past him. Not, I mean, when you look at how he was operating earlier in the, the same day and, you know, fumbling with his jacket for, you know, dropping his glasses, 
apparently just coming off of his second bout and he's next to, I can't remember which governor he was sitting next to, and he's hacking away. Like, and you can see the governor next to him going like, uh, cringing, you know? So uh, he might have, he might not have, but definitely his handlers now, put it that way. Well, um, and then shame, shame, the attorney general and the DO, and the attorney general and uh, the uh, head of this new mouthpiece for the uh, per person occupying the people's house who, you know, they went up against parents. You know, you have all that going on. But so the correlation between something that happened a week ago out of this exact same field office that also had to do with also has to do with the fact uh, with uh, the whole thing that happened on January the 6th a while back. Then you have the excuse of the subpoena, which has to do with the archives of DC, which also is correlated with the field agents of this particular, that particular office. And, you know, the whole thing is, you know, just doesn't sound right. Because when you compare this incident or the reason for the subpoena, and you correlated that with a also a, pa a past person that ran for presidency who she did not get in, uh, where there was issues with emails and you know taking some sort of liquid to fry her um, apparatuses. Now she was granted the luxury of having her representation, legal counsel, um, put information on a flash drive, which would be held for the big brother of who was running that particular case. And they got to put it in the uh, representative's safe. No raid, no, no uh, early morning plain clothesmen of 30 plus people arriving at your home, no 20 cars. So for, for, the, for Americans out there, regardless of your political ideologies, what you're feeling is a lot of frustration and stress because you're thinking if this could happen to this person, why wouldn't it happen to us? In addition to now add all the other sidebars that are happening, and then with this, this new thing that they're voting on, you know, people are, are stressed. People are up in arms. And it, like I said, it goes beyond, you know, what side of your political ideologies are. It goes back to, is, you know, is this justice uh, for, for one or is it, you know, a, a, two, a two tier justice system for the lay person versus a party? You have all these different avenues and people get stressed out over that and it impacts your health and wellness, you can. And so how do we triumph over this feeling of, you know, uncertainty, this feeling of, you know, we're so out of control, big, like we're beyond what I think anyone would have imagined. But as I stated, I think it was nine months ago when someone asked me, we talked about this online as well, you know, how much worse can it get? And I said, oh, it's not over. And, you know, no one likes to be right in that situation, but when you, you think of, um, you know, what's going on, but switching gears a little bit to local politics, your state is actually having a, today's a voting day. Yeah, the, uh, the primaries, and, and Gary reminded me of it at like 6.30, quarter, seven, and I'm like, uh, Gary couldn't have voted in it, but I could have certainly voted in it. Why couldn't it be? Oh, because he's a registered something else. Okay, got it. Um, but it looked pretty favorable for some change, from what I understand. And that's what we are certainly hoping. And, you know, change, change occurs because it's the democratic way of how our election system worked, should work, and should always work. And... I think I really can go off on this subject because I've been involved with politics in town politics specifically. And, you know, what, and I'm no expert. I want to make that very clear. I'm no expert on politics, but being involved with it, I can tell you that I've had many 
um, discussions with, you know, different parties. I'll just leave it at that, you know, who are, do not, or did not have the same um, ideology or whatever we want to call it as myself. And that's okay. But I was able to have a discussion with them. And what I find very disturbing about the current situation is you would think you would think that any party now i don't care if you're democrat republican far left far whatever everyone should be outraged that this is happening because this only happens in very totalitarian and i'm not saying that word correctly regimes and i just find that so disturbing and of course they showed a i saw a brief clip of all the different fake news networks i'm just gonna say that y'all suck out there um applauding that this happened without having all the facts here we go you can't have a discussion with someone who is going to take silly putty and mold it into what they think it should be everyone should be outraged because that means not only is your representation with everything going on is affected and i don't think people I don't know that a lot of people um, know that, or maybe, I don't know. Well, you know, I, I, and I didn't, you know, I was really trying to, you know, use today because it's Triumph Tuesday for, you know, I would say this is a great day to triumph over different things that are going on in your life that maybe are not in control and always do it with self-care. So today I did a lot of self-care things for me personally, which I, I needed to do and it felt good to do them so I really kind of stayed away I was up late last night watching and I, like I said I have not been watching uh, network television whatsoever um, but they of course released some clips and when you have uh, an attorney well actually it was two pieces that struck me I, it doesn't surprise me but struck me uh, it didn't even strike a chord I hope it strikes a chord with some that you know, have blinders on, but you have an attorney on um, one of the stations uh, advising 45 to be prepared for his orange outfit to match his hair yeah. um, and to let his family know that this is where he was going. Now he's now become, you know, a political hack, a judge, a jury, a lawyer that I wouldn't give two cents worth for his two cents. Um, and you, he looked like a total jackass because that's not that's not justice. That's not a, a judicial process that our constitution is founded on. So I found that ironic. The other one I found very, um, I would say probably he's 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 such a buffoon, uh, but was the former agent uh, mouthpiece to this particular party struck i think his name is i don't even remember where he had to resign uh and he was end up gonna sue uh and 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 of course for his part remember you had the the fake the uh untruth uh dossier and he was all wrapped up in all of that him and his gal pal yeah. friends um now he's given his opinion that you know this has never happened in the history and from his um expertise and i'm i'm subphrasing some of you know what he said uh i'm not being very uh, i'm being cryptid but so he gives this whole long speech um and this is coming from someone who is not trust trustworthy he's been proven to be not trustworthy had his own issues with his own big brother and we're supposed to you know the american people are supposed to listen to him so what I would say to the people that are still sticking with this narrative, I mean, and when you think about it, how many times they've gone after 45, you know, how many impeachments, uh, you know, the January 6th, uh, the collusion, the Russia, like it just doesn't stop. And 
for most people that have common sense that really embrace their health and wellness, say, look at, I've got to look at it, everything objectively. But the bottom line is you've got, you've, you've got facts here that have been already proven and why keep coming? Why keep going after? And all because of possible documents that belong in the archives in DC which the DC, you know, the District of Columbia is not a state, and we, we have all that underlining things going on with that piece to it. Now, an interesting part of that is I did hear his son say that they were well aware of, you know, this question about that. They said, Look at the boxes, and then the insinuation of that 45, you only have six hours to, from, 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 from one party or, or one uh, administration departing the people's house before the new person that's going to occupy the peace lot. Do you, does people actually think that he was actually packing his own boxes, number one, which is kind of ludicrous because that's the other narrative piece. So at some point you have to say common sense regardless. Now I know we have family members, we have friends that you know are probably all in on this crazy narrative and at some point i you know i don't even scratch my head anymore the only word that comes to mind that does do justice to my health and wellness is to say use some common sense because if you're not using common sense with looking at the whole picture objectively it's not a matter of ignorance. <laughs> you are a stunad. <laughs> and that is the most pol the politest way I can do it to make sure that I keep my health and wellness in check. Well, it's the silly putty method. Like, hey, let's, you know, and, and let's be real. They're, they're not hiding their, like if somebody said the sky is blue and you look outside and you see the sky is blue, but then you have the far, and I'm waving with my left hand for our listeners that say it's black, they will argue that fact. You could see the truth that the sky is blue. And I'm there's a lot more I could say, but isn't it interesting that the judge who signed off on the uh, the warrant it was somehow associated with other things and I'll just leave it at that. Well, that and then <laughs> the head of this new mouthpiece, uh, Ray, 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 as soon as the deed was done, gets on a private jet to go on a cake. You can't make this this stuff up. Hey, so, oh. There's one more thing. I sorry, I don't no, mean to go right ahead. But, but yes, I guess I do because I yes. got a lot to say. And it's also interesting that uh, oh, they're so afraid that he that he was gonna hide the stuff or shred it or do this and that. And he's in flipping New York or New Jersey. Give me a break. Like, yeah, use common sense. And you know what? Whatever. I, okay. I'm I am so annoyed. Well, and I think a lot of people. People are, and again, that you know, you have to look at it. You know, validate how you feel because it does get people's blood boiling. Uh, you know, you have all these people that are, you know, gl very gleeful. And remember, those are the same people that were gleeful when you know they had him already buried ten feet under with uh, the Russian collusion with all this other crapola, and. I've always said, regardless, I think the difference between one side to the other, one side doesn't mind call, even calling out their own. If they don't feel like they're doing the will of the people, they have no problem. The other side will back these people. And the fact that you, you know, you, you spend your time doing this stuff, but there's other warrants that should be served. And they're not. And you, have, you have to like at one point say, well, why not? If, it, if it's true, if, if justice is justice and justice for all and it's fair, 
then why are you making it so obvious that it's not? What are you, you know, what are you so nervous about? And for them to go after him, which from what I understand, and I don't know all the legalities, as we said, Janice and I have always said, we're not experts on this, but, you know, things that I, I heard differently. Apparently, when you have a raid, um, it, it sounded like, and I could be wrong, again, we're not legal experts, that an attorney or somebody is supposed to be on site and there wasn't any. So now you've got a group of uh, mouthpieces for one party gathering evidence or what they think is evidence. How do you know that they're not gonna insert things into these boxes? Um, exactly. because, because if we're supposed to go with a good old fashioned, they're them and we're supposed to have good faith and trust. They lost that a long time ago with so many things that they've handled. So the, the good faith, good trust can't be there. It shouldn't be there because of what they've proven. Now that does not mean there are not very good people within this agency. There are. There were many good agents that were shocked uh, of how this went down. I mean, here you have uh, one office, you know, that's less than you know forty minutes away that has no clue that this is even going on. You know, you have the attorney general of the state doesn't know what's going on. The governor of the state doesn't. Now, now, granted, I understand with you know high subpoenas where you know. It could be a warrant for, you know, people that are unscrupulous and, you know, danger of uh, weapons because, you know, they're selling things that are illegal. You know, those are top secret. This, which has never been done in the history of our country, uh, you know, and everyone goes, oh, you know, now that they, they're, they're angry with our country. Don't be angry with our country. Be angry with the people that you voted in. Those are the people that you have to be angry. And in order for our for our own well-being uh, to feel good about, you know, who we've got in office and who is doing the will of the people, if it turns out that somebody gets in, they need to clean house from the bottom up. Well, actually, in this case, from the top down, <laughs> because there are a lot of good people tears below that don't like and people need to start coming coming for come forward and letting loose on the just egregious behavior that's been going on and then you have like the third in command gloating over it um you know and i thought her and i'm speaking of pelosi i thought her comments Coming now from where she was just, you know, a lot of things going on with her possible issues with her husband and the market and then his own personal thing and a lot of unscrupulous things. I found it very, and I can't say, I even say it's appalling because I'm not surprised, but in, and you know, with these particular bad actors, nothing surprises me anymore, but to come out and gleefully with with nothing but gloat when the old-fashioned actually it's a quote from i think it was jesus christ superstar if you're and the, and the person was referring to a bad apple that was berating um mary magdalene and it was if your slate is clean then you can throw stones if your slate is not, leave her alone. And that's that that verse of that particular movie kept like just playing in my head all day long. These bad actors who definitely do not have a clean slate. And let's be real, no one does because no one is perfect. The only one perfect in, in my world is our Lord. But when these bad actors come across as disingenuine as they did, as if they were above all this. And yet they're been in, they've recently been in the news for their own very, very bad behavior, which we know never gets any attention. It just gets shoved under the carpet. I found it, you know, the only thing that gave me solace today was I have to believe with all my heart, especially after we saw God's promise the other day with the double rainbow. I have to believe with all my heart 
that justice does prevail, maybe not in this life, but in the next. Rules for thee, but not for me. Mm. Yeah. So Triumph Tuesday, what are we triumphing over? Um, <laughs> oh, a lot. Ay, ay, ay. Well, let's just say that uh, as far as the abundance of vegetables go, that has been amazing. The smells, the aromas. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait for a couple of weeks. I can't, well, actually, not even a couple of weeks. I, I, I can't wait to get my hands on a, you know, a tomato salad. <laughs> oh my gosh. I threw together, you know, because last night it was just crazy. The last couple of nights, so I'm like, oh, you know, what do I make for dinner? And just threw some gluten free pasta together um, with some leftover. I don't know why I thought of this, but it was leftover omelet. And I'm like, yeah, I'll just throw that. I was like, just throwing everything yeah, in. Why not? And then I'm like, oh, it needs some color. So I cut up like eight, I don't know, six or eight um, plum tomatoes, you know, and it just kind of like, you know, stirred everything together. I'm like, ah, oh, it needs like a, a little bit more cheese. And I had some, um, I think it was Swiss cheese. I'm like, oh, I'll just throw some pieces in there you know, and stirred it up. And, and Gary's like, is that gluten-free pasta? Ugh, <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Not, oh, wow, this looks interesting, dear. And um, of course, you know, gave him not his usual serving because he was whining that it was gluten-free pasta. And um, he scoffed that up and he's like, is there any more? I'm like, so he had a second helping. Yeah, I mean, that, that that is so cool about making different recipes you know using from what you've got in your garden maybe some leftovers you know some added treats to it and you know that does the 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 body good number one but it makes you feel good that you're you know using you know food out of your own garden uh to supplement you know what you're serving and i think that's so cool i can't i can't wait to see all the vegetables and smell the tomatoes and uh, because there's nothing like a new england tomato now i did buy some vine tomatoes here they were probably imported i'm sure um so i left them out to ripen a little bit and they're very good considering because most of florida tomatoes suck <laughs> they horrible they're just not they're just not like a good old-fashioned new england homegrown tomato so I did find some some decent ones, so I was kind of happy about that. But I, you know, then I was thinking, oh, next week I'll be having some really good tomatoes, you know, because there's nothing like you pick it right from the vine, and not only is it just you know makes your taste buds burst, but the the aroma, the smells of a garden, it's yeah. just freshness as fresh can be, and it um, you know is it is awesome. It's awesome. So try it Tuesday. You know, let this day be, you know, like I said, we, you know, we talk about things that we have to triumph over, you know, our feelings, what frustrates us, you know, maybe we couldn't get to, you know, things that we wanted to accomplish today. Maybe you need extra care for yourself. So you did some self care. So you say, you know what, I can't, I recognize that I can't get to whatever it's got to be or whatever I got to get done. And instead of, instead of, you know, getting so mad and angry about it, just, you know, accept it. I'm going to triumph over. I couldn't do it today. That's okay. I can get to it another day or another time. But you know what? What was more important to me was my own health, my own self-care. Uh, we don't do that or not. And that would be one thing uh, I think we can, everyone can agree that, especially during these times of uncertainty, um, I do know there's four states today that we're, we're, we're doing um, primaries. So that'll be interesting to see. But, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, we are just, you know, a few people. When you think about how many people are in the world and our impact, uh, A, has to be in this situation at the voters box, regardless of all the hoopla and cray cray with all of that. And know that we are only in control of how we act and how we react to a situation. So for your own safety, for your own well-being, you know, be picky and choosy who you decide that you want to vent about and get that over and triumph over that. Um, don't be 
pushed. Um, and there is one, because I did get a message about this uh, regarding going back to 45. And uh, yeah, I want to make sure I read it co co correctly because a lot of people, again, you know, where we always talk about we are not um, legal experts. Um, a lot of people are questioning the legality of a president with classified documents that may or may not be part of what they're looking for and or can a POTUS do that. Um, when you are the president uh, and as such, you can legally decertify whatever he or she wants to and whenever he or she wants to. And that's a part of the missing piece that subnetworks are not bringing forth right with the public. And that is why I hope that the public uh, does uh, understand that media does do a disservice of information. They always have, they always will until someone decides to clean them up. I don't know how you, how you do that. The only way to clean them up is to turn them off, <laughs> make their radius go in the poo poo. But be mindful of that you're not in control what they do. So yelling at the TV, uh, while that may be kind of like a way to let it out uh, is not healthy to prolong that. Uh, I always say if you're feeling like your insides are ready to like scream and you know either go into a one room by yourself and just scream and let it out or go work out, jump into your pool and do laps, call a friend, go take a bubble bath, uh, meditate, put on some, some good music. Because at the end of the day, you can't control it. None of this we can control as bizarre and banana republic that we are currently in. And God forbid, many countries are looking at us and going, what is going on with this United States? Uh, the citizens are also questioning that. And that's all we can do. We, it's just, it's not in our hands. And by the way, for those folks over uh, at 1600 who are trying to do a rebranding kind of thing over there it ain't working just saying and on that note triumph tuesday at night with two sisters this one ah, that felt really good by the way good my That's name should do. <laughs> <laughs> my name is janice aka one of steepa 5.0 we will be on tomorrow morning with a guest we're excited to have her on Ditch the diet culture. Love that subject. Um, and we will be on at 8 a.m. And I'm with two sisters. And this is Carol. So AKA and Naughty Boss. Going to go get my chill on. Uh, I triumphed over not <laughs> using a punching bag today. I took the information in, deciphered it, and then I put it aside because I was focusing on my health and wellness today. And we hope that you are doing the same. Always be kind to yourself. Uh, always be true to yourself, uh, be postured in your beliefs, but also know when to just say, you know what, let it go. With that, we will see you tomorrow morning. Take care, everyone. Have a great evening. Bye-bye. Oh, one more Ooh. thing I got to say. Got one more. One more thing. Let's go, Brandon. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Good night.